Hey guys, my name is Simpsy, how you all doing? Welcome back to some more FIFA 22 career mode here today on the channel. We have episode 3 of my Eric Ten Hag Manchester United Dutch Revolution series. Here today we're going to be kicking things off with a match against Frank Lampard's terrible Everton. After 6 games played, we sit atop with 15 points. Hopefully we can start things off with a win. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We are struggling with our striker form and goalkeeping form at the moment. Our defense has looked solid. Our midfield and wingers are the best uh, players at the moment playing well. But let's get things underway with the kickoff. It's taken a super late here in the 77th minute for us to create something. Luke Shaw pushed up on the pitch. Gravenbach finds Dolberg, who goes all the way himself nearly back to Gravenbach. And it's Anthony to sneak the goal there. This guy is playing insane football at the club at the moment. He is definitely the player in form. Could have slipped it to a number of players there, but went all the way himself. And managed to snatch the goal against Everton. Pickford, humiliated. I don't even know what type of skill move that is. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Somehow shuffled it back and forth. Probably didn't need to do it. But he's got that Brazilian flair and maestro in his body. And that's his first goal in seven matches. Which is a little bit deceiving because he has scored, obviously, in the Champions League and in the Carabao Cup in recent memory. So technically he scored like three and four, which is really quite insane. And he's been subbed off for that goal, and we brought in Coop Menes. That's how the match ended. So after seven games played, we sit in 18th and won a really superb run. Arsenal now are in second, Wolves in third. All right. I don't know if Alanga's the man to be up front either. We're just struggling with goal output. I just think Dolberg is probably the best Three. We might need to look for a striker in January. Yeah, let me know in the comments. Who should I sign in January? Has to be either from Ajax or Dutch. But Liverpool sit in second now. We're playing match day eight. Arsenal doing all right, which is great to see. But we go away to Leicester to face the Fierce Foxes. Over recent memory under Brendan Rodgers, they've been bottling it in finals quite a bit. Hopefully they bottle it against us. All right, let's get things underway. 25 minutes in, United looking good. Gravenberch finds Van der Beek, who slips through. Dolberg, who scores a magnificent goal. And he is, without a shadow of a doubt, staking his claim to being Manchester United's new and improved striker. Alanga just isn't high enough rated. He's got the skills to pay the bills, Alanga. So I think we might need to play him as a winger. I think he's just better there. Sebastian Allaire has been pure dog shit since joining. He did all right in the preseason, but I don't know, man. Maybe he is just not cut out for the Premier League. He's only a Champions League player in and out. So at this stage, 10 games into the season, overall comp comps roughly, um, we might need to look to loan him out. Looks like we made a 25 million mistake, and Dolberg seems the better of the two strikers. And that's how the close and narrow fixture ended with a 1-0 victory away at Leicester. Once again, the Foxes bottling it against a top four side. But it was thanks to that man there, Kasper Dolberg, to pick up the only goal for us. Back in the Champions League, we go away to Switzerland to try and seal our top two spot as Jorginho... An unlikely player there, being the top goal scorer. Um, I think I want to change things up. I might give Haller Like, this is make or break. Look, if you can't score a goal against <laughs> Young Boys, the Swiss team, um, I don't really know what to do with you. I'm tempted to rotate the team slightly as well because this is a weaker Champions League fixture. I'm nearly tempted to bring off David De Gea as well and just... Give some of the substitutions and reserves reservists a bit of a run. Uh, Anthony's been on fiery form. Sancho uh, has dipped a little bit. So maybe we'll bring on Alanga. Because we do want to try and share around 
the uh, the growth rating as well. But anyway, let's get stuck into BSC Young Boys and try and pick up the W away in Switzerland. Let's go. Kickoff is about to be underway. 43rd minute, our defense is in a shambles. Rafael Varand lets Young Boys slip on in and they go 1-0 up on the 45th. In the pouring rain in Switzerland, they're not to be messed with. There's been a, a lot of interesting sort of rise and falls in Swiss football. With Zurich, FC Zurich being one of the dominant teams early in the 2000s. Then Basel came out of nowhere. Now it's BSC Young Boys. Swiss football is um, super interesting. That actually might be quite fun. To maybe do a rebuild with one of those teams. But maybe in hindsight, we should have kept David De Gea, but we've got more quality than them in this team available. And Jean-Pierre Naysom starts off the scoring. Can we get back into this one? I fucking hope so. 80th minute. Alanga finds Sebastian Allaire. Back to Bruno Fernandes. Picks up a pretty good assist, but unfortunately Allaire didn't pick up the goal this match, and it's taken Bruno Fernandes to save the points in the 80th minute, making it 1-1. So, a lot of food for thought here. Alanga just probably isn't good enough for the first team just yet. I just wish he was more higher rated. Bruno's been playing really quite well. We cleared out a lot of dead wood at the club. Ronaldo, Rashford, Pogba... All players which either aren't in form or just aren't team players and don't want to be here. But Fernandez has been awesome. 1-1 one, one is what it's probably going to, to end with. And we'll take the points. So we currently sit with five points in the group stage. I'm really heavily rotating the team. Just to give everyone some growth. And just trying to feel feel and find my my optimal team. So we'll bring back David De Gea. We'll bring back Sancho. And we'll bring back Dolberg. We'll make Dave the captain. Alright, so we're currently sitting at the top of the Premier League. Followed by Liverpool Arsenal doing pretty good. Seeing how bad their squad is. Um, Brentford in the relegation zone. Chelsea, Man City, doing shocking. But we're going to end things off with the Northwest Derby against Liverpool. We're three points in front, but this is going to be a huge one as they have an amazing team. Hopefully, we can pick up the W. Let's go. 21st minute. Unfortunately, our defense has looked sheepish and sleepy as Jamie Vardy finds Mane. And the Scousers start off the scoring at the Stretford end, just before the 22nd minute. We always have a terrible time facing Liverpool. More than likely this year's Premier League winners. Settings Pep bottled another Champions League semi-final. I think that's six in a row he's failed at. So, let me know in the comments. Do you think his time at Manchester City was a failure? I think so. He was brought in to win the Champions League. He's won a lot of Premier Leagues, but overall, they brought him in for the Champions League. But he did the same thing as Bayern as well. He, he stuffed up a lot of those Champions League fixtures. But it's okay. We're going to have the final laugh because Liverpool are going to lose to Real Madrid in the Champions League final. Thanks to big old Carlo. Milner. Liverpool. Cruising. Looking for their second. And we just look really out of it as Jamie Vardy slips through Naby Keita and David De Gea just ball watching there at the moment. And the Scousers go 2-0 up as they're becoming the dominant force now over United. The power shift in this Northwest Derby is firmly swinging to the side of Liverpool, especially with the reinforcements as well. And their recruitment signing. Not bringing in Timo Werner. Letting Chelsea deal with that nightmare. Opting to go with... Other players like... Diaz. Who served them well. And Jota. Second half. It's going to be a 
Humiliation, more than likely, as Sulla, looking dangerous, finds Kieta. Back to Milner with an Elastico, who slips through Fabinho, and we're 3-0 down. The toys are well and truly at the pram, and Jurgen Klopp has delivered our biggest defeat this season and has firmly launched Liverpool at the top of the Premier League. We've lost the Northwest Derby 3-0 and we really need to come back from it. Gutting, disappointed. David De Gea having an absolute shocker along with our defence, not properly man-marking. Although we had a couple good wins in today's video and a couple decent draws, we end this episode on a sour note with a 3-0 drumming. Hopefully, next time around, in episode 4, coming out the exact same time tomorrow, we can uh, pick up some better quality performances. But unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. I've got to play the outro now. I'll see you in episode 4 soon, fellas. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>